Aegis, I'd like to talk to you about my research. Do you have a few moments to spare for me? Certainly, mon père. I am listening. I've carefully collected the testimony of our companions here. Then I compared them with the observations made during my investigation of the man who calls himself Cagliostro. I came to quite the shocking conclusion. I think... I believe... I have discovered how the royal automats remain constantly in motion. Like clocks that never need winding. They get their energy from the souls of the dead, Aegis. They drink from the anima essence that permeates the purgatory described by Monseigneur de la Farre. These machines feed on the dead. The greater the massacre, the deeper the river where they slake their thirst. Is there any way to stop the bloodshed, Mon Père? I believe there is always hope, Aegis. As long as I remain free to pursue my research, I will never lose faith. I keep thinking about the three Nemes, these echoes. All of this is clearly related to Nicholas Flamel's work. The Alchemist? Precisely, mon ami. And this leads me to fear the worst. What have we to fear from an alchemist who died nearly four centuries ago? Not him, per se. Rather, the heretic who is exploiting his discoveries. This poses a grave danger to us all. What do you fear, mon père? What do I fear? Nearly two months ago, the king forbade anyone from setting foot inside the Église Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, near the Hôtel de Ville. He had the priests forcibly removed. They hardly even had time to save the church's sacred relics. Since then, only our Father in Heaven knows what they've been doing there, hidden away from the people of Paris. Oh dear. Flamel's tomb. My thoughts exactly, Monseigneur. Legend has it that Flamel was buried with his Lapis Philosophorum. What is the Lapis Philosophorum, mon père? The Philosopher's Stone. Where do I begin? No one knows its true nature, or even what it might look like. All that is known is that it is said to grant untold riches and eternal life to whoever possesses it. Its very existence is questioned, of course. But if it's true, just imagine what sinister purpose the king and his accomplices might find for it. We must elucidate this matter at any cost. Where is this tomb? In the church's crypt. The priests always ensured that it remained undisturbed, despite the mystery surrounding it. But now they're no longer there to protect it. We need to know for certain. But how? There are automats everywhere. Aegis. Oui, mon père. Will you help us get to the bottom of this? Did you not say that it was impossible to enter the church? There is perhaps a solution. The penitent's door behind the Châtelet leads to the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. It's only opened on Good Friday, but this year, I had the honor and good fortune to lead the procession. Here is the key. Goodbye, mon père. How is your research on Nicholas Fermel going? I have done nothing yet. Don't take too long, Aegis. Don't forget that the tomb is in the crypt of the Église Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, under the cemetery. The church isn't far from the Hôtel de Ville.
this turn. It also mentions the Quartier du Saint-Eustache and Rue Saint-Honoré. Can I help you, Aegis? What is the significance of these objects steeped in memories? 
Nimi's. I have reread every work that I have on them. Pages that have remained unintelligible to this day. These echoes go back to the beginning of time. To that fateful day in ancient Greece when some dark magician took it into his head to bind a soul to an inanimate object. You see, Aegis, there is nothing more diabolical, nothing more unnatural than this sorcery. The soul is the very essence of the divine. It refuses to submit to such an abomination and resists, eventually breaking. The earliest necromancers whose works have survived through the centuries all describe the same phenomenon. When a soul is fragmented, three shards of memory are torn from its consciousness and take shelter in three objects that the victim held dear. It's as if these memories wish to remain bound to the mortal who had held them until then. What is the significance of these objects steeped in memories? Nimes. I have reread every work that I have on them. Pages that have remained unintelligible to this day. These echoes go back to the beginning of time. To that fateful day in ancient Greece when some dark magician is the sleep when it and takes it as if these memories wish to remain bound to the more. I found this notebook written in Latin. Indeed. Medieval Latin, to be precise. Oh, hold on. Balsam. Aegis, what a find. This handwriting. I would recognize it anywhere. It's in Nicholas Flamel's own hand. Give me some time to study this, and I'll tell you what I'm able to glean from it. Have you finished reading the notebook, mon père? Yes, Aegis. And what I learned from it puzzles me. In this diary, Flamel tells of three journeys. Three journeys into what he calls the in-between. A strange world filled with wandering souls. Tormented spirits that are unable to ascend to heaven. This world? It's where Cagliostro's victims were trapped until I freed them. Bonifé, I believe you're right. But that's not all. Flamel planned to return there a fourth time. He wrote this in the final paragraph, in his handwriting, dated 21st of March, 1418. That was the day before he died, Aegis. What if his body died while his soul was traveling through limbo? What if he were trapped, a prisoner in this purgatory? Aegis, because of your unique nature, we have an incredible opportunity. What do you mean, mon père? If the soul that animates you has been bound to the automaton that serves as its vessel, then it can be separated from it too. And if this were the case, the soul would travel to purgatory, where Cagliostro entraps the souls of his victims. Hold on. Are you trying to convince me to go and find Nicholas Flamel? I'm offering you a chance to speak to the man who discovered the Philosopher's Stone. Surely you won't pass it up. Assuming I agree to venture into purgatory, do I even have a chance of finding him there? Certainly. According to this journal, the soul flies to the zenith of the place where it left the body of the deceased. Or that of the pilgrim, in this case. If Flamel's soul is trapped in purgatory, as we've guessed, You'll need to go to the house where he drew his dying breath. Is it still standing? Of course. It's on Rue de Montmorency, in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. You can get there via the cemetery of the Église Saint-Jacques. And how do you plan to free my spirit from this automat? We would simply need to break the bond between them. And to do this, we would need to stop your machinery. For a short time, of course. We don't want to lose you, ma chère. As for the rest, it will be a question of mechanics, chemistry, or electric currents, or something or other. Therein lies the problem. This is far beyond my comprehension. But it is fascinating, isn't it? Perhaps Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier could shed some light on the matter. Goodbye, mon père. Monsieur Lavoisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? Do you think there is any way to interrupt... my internal clockwork? To what end? I would like to briefly sever the bond between my spirit and this automat. Hmm. It is a very strange request, madame. For what purpose do you seek to free your soul from its shell? According to the abbot, my spirit would then be able to visit purgatory. Oh, that dreadful place. Why on earth would you want to go there? 
I hope to find answers to some very important questions. You must understand, madame, that your very nature is a mystery to us. We are ignorant as to the principle that imbues you with life, nor do we know how your machinery works. That is why it is impossible for us to make even the slightest alteration. It would mean taking an unacceptable risk. Of course, if we had documents that could shed light on the matter... Antoine, the blueprints. What blueprints, mon ami? Ludias. Eugène gave them to me when he was working on the modifications ordered by the king. He wanted my opinion on the potential for reducing the size of certain key parts. The documents are obsolete now, but they could tell us quite a bit about the mechanical principles that are shared by Ludia and Aegis. Bon song, you're right. Where are the blueprints now? Alas, the situation is not in our favor. I kept them in the safe at the observatory, but earlier, when I went there to collect my most important documents, before setting off for the convent, I found looters making off with its contents. Blasted scavengers! Their kind are always quick to make the most of chaos. I chased them to the keys, but was unable to apprehend them. When they disappeared into an underground passageway under the Louvre, I decided it was best not to follow them. You acted wisely, mon ami. The automats are everywhere, and the marauders don't stand much of a chance. I'll try to track them down. Goodbye, Monsieur Levoisier. Did you find the blueprints that were stolen from me? No, monsieur. Don't forget that those documents are our only chance to discover what was used to craft you. The looters disappeared into the tunnels under the Louvre and the Tuileries. I find it hard to believe that they were able to escape from that maze safely. Monsieur. Huh? Who goes there? Oh, so let's get the hell out of here. Run, Claude. Run if you can. Oh, my lord. I told you we'd get caught. Monsieur B.E. Here are the blueprints you asked for. Good heavens. You found them. Your thieves were not able to profit much from their theft. They met with an unfortunate end. Oh, the poor souls. Their crimes did not deserve such a permanent ending. Certainly, certainly. Let us look at these documents now, if you will. No, Antoine. The F-wheel is not part of the cog that transfers the driving force to the escapement. Diable, you're right. It's driven by the B-wheel, 
and its axis is on the shaft that's visible at this point. Precisely. In fact, the shaft sits between the conical bearing and the small groove here. See? True. It's decided then. All we would have to do is separate these two plates to disable the entire thing. And to put them back in place at the agreed time to start the machine again. You will not be able to assist me. I have to do it alone. Half a league away. You must be joking. By no means. You will have to find another solution. Unfortunately, madame, you're asking us to do the impossible. Oh, ça, par exemple. Once your spirit is untethered from this automat, it will be impossible for you to start the machine up again. Hold on, my dear Antoine. Is this device in figure four? Is it still in place? Hmm. Yes, it is. What of it? Bon sang. It's a timer. It's primitive, true, but fully functional. The dial has marks from one to fifteen. Probably minutes. It was to allow Eugène to plan the duration of Ludia's dances in advance. Oh, I see. And by reversing the position of this peg in the center, we could instead turn it into a period of inactivity. Nous y sommes, mon ami. Fantastic! Will Aegis be able to operate this device herself? We'll make it easier for her. All you have to do is put a bolt there that she can remove when the time is right. Yes, a small iron rod will suffice. We won't have any trouble finding something that will do. When the timer dial reaches zero, the automat will come back to life. However, given the dial's fragility, we will probably get only one chance to try this. Are you sure that the bond between my soul and this machine will be re-established? Ma foi, I admit that we can't be sure of this. What do you say, mon père? Don't be afraid, Aegis. Unless I've been wrong from the beginning, your soul will seek refuge in the only body it has available to it in this world. Well then. Shall we start the preparations? Let's begin. My fate is in your hands, monsieur. Voila. Everything is in place. When it's time, just pull on this metal loop to start the timer. Remember, you will have 15 minutes and no more before your spirit returns to your body. We wish you good luck, madame. Remember, to get to Rue de Montmorency, you're best going through the cemetery behind the Église Saint-Jacques in the Quartier de l'Hôtel de Ville. Here is the key to the gate. Our prayers are with you, my child.
holy mother of our lord, at last thou speakest! Uh. Gentle dame, you have erred here for so long, not a word uttered. <laughs> In singular contemplation of such terrible slaughter. A long time, you say? That's not possible, sir. I've just now appeared to you. Nay, but thou must trust me. And thou was hardly alone in this limbo. There were many travelers, stiff and silent, all in agony, all bound to the anchor stone. What travelers do you speak of? The first to arrive was a sobbing child, searching for his mother. <laughs> After him, uh, many a damned soul carrying their own heads in hand. Then, those whose thoughts passed through me. Ah, a minister of God, tormented by doubt. Hold on. A minister of God? Monsignor de la Farre? A scholar with soul star-filled and a learned master of alchemy. Monsieur Bailly and Monsieur Lavoisier. A usurer who shed so many tears for his lady. Monsieur Necker, mourning his wife. All bound to the anchor stone. <laughs> Wretched souls, their ascension to the heavens repelled. The anchor stone, monsieur. Lapis philosophorum. The philosopher's stone. Aye! Vile knave who took it for his own lately. No count is he but that of trespass and perfidy. Cagliostro. Well met. The rope for this violet and I shall be avenged. The Anchor Stone keeps the travelers in this limbo and makes them masters of the Iron Titans. From the defunct springs the fire that burns inside these demons. <laughs> Lanterns of the dead. Witchcraft of the blackest sword. The terrible slaughter. You say I was just observing the massacres. Aye. Vile, innumerable crimes. The devil's own accursed titans and their restless horde. They drinketh from the lake where the souls of the dead sleep. <laughs> Men and women offered in sacrifice to feed the pyre. Then the terrible moor was opened, and in flowed legion of the dead. Ne'er has I seen such and so many here during all my stay. Oh. The stone is verily mine dark confine. Lonely, so lonely, that mine vessel is no more. And my soul still clustered in this place. Alack, I do despair of ever ascending to heaven. Gentle dame, I pray thee, do shatter my stone. You want me to break the stone that contains your soul? Is that what you're asking me to do? I, my God, I beg thee. Do you know where this stone is? You've been buried for more than three centuries, monsieur. The precious jewel, sublime treasure, was inscribed in my legacy, my testament, my testament. On my tomb engraved, gentle dame, on the tomb! about it immediately. Can I help you, Aegis? The plan worked as we had hoped. My spirit left my body, and I traveled to the in-between. This is extraordinary. It confirms all my theories. You were right about the rest, too. Nicholas Flamel's soul had never left the in-between. Mon Dieu, four centuries. What a fearsome fate. Were you able to speak with this unfortunate soul? Yes, mon père. He claimed that I had been in purgatory for a long time, but had never spoken until then. 
Please, go on. He said he had met other visitors. Based on his descriptions, he was speaking of Monsignor de la Fare, Minister Necker, Monsieur Bailly, and Monsieur Lavoisier. They all seemed unaware of his presence. All bound to the anchor stone. Those were his words. All those whom Cagliostro turned into his homicidal playthings. Yes, it is just as I thought. The subject has the impression of being the automat it is bound to, but his soul remains in the in-between world. Mon père, Monsieur Flamel begged me to free him from purgatory. He has suffered for too long. How can we help him? If he is to be believed, we would simply have to break his stone. Of course, the Philosopher's Stone. The anchor stone that keeps him in the in-between. But where could it be after all this time? Look at this, mon père. These are Philosopher's Stones made by Cagliostro's hand. Do they look familiar? Heavens, they do. Ages. The ancient chalice of Saint-Jacques is adorned with a similar stone. It was entrusted to me by the parish priests, along with some other relics. I stored it in a reliquary chest in this very room. Here's the key. Go. Let us not waste a second more. Goodbye, mon père. Here it is. Four centuries, ages. Four centuries. No mind can begin to comprehend what this poor man has suffered. Is this the fate that awaits us? An eternity of silence and solitude? Purgatory is just a stop on the journey, Monseigneur. Oh, I would give anything to believe it again. Monsieur Flamel, the time has come to set you free. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. Hallelujah! Purgatory is not the end. Do you know what that means, Abbot? Before I say anything, I would like to take the time to consider the phenomenon we have just witnessed with a clear head. You are mistaken. What we have just seen and heard makes us new apostles. From this day on, I will live only to share the good news of this divine manifestation. That is all well and good, Monseigneur. Alas, I will not be able to join your apostolate, for there is no mission more vital than the one we are undertaking. At the moment when the tyrant aims to annihilate his subjects, I have a duty to put deeds before prayer. <laughs> 